Just a quick tutorial that I kind of wanted to go over. When I started out working with electrical things, I would have thought would have been nice to know um, and not have to learn a couple of things the hard way. What I'm going to go through right now is three different ways to measure the amperage of a circuit. So to do this, I'm going to be using a power supply that has a constant current feature in it. If you don't have a constant current feature, you really shouldn't ever try to do this with your power supply. Most likely it'll blow a fuse out of your meter or it'll blow a fuse in the power supply. What I mean by constant current is if I set the voltage to 5 volts and I set the current limit to 1 amp, right now I will have 5 volts at these outputs. But, if I short them together, it stops the current at 1 amp, and you can see the voltage actually drops down. So, essentially the voltage will only be constant if it's under 1 amp. If it hits 1 amp, it'll actually start scaling the voltage back to keep it as a constant current. So, with it set like this, when I'm connected, I have about one amp of current going through it. So if I have an unknown circuit and I want to know what the current is going through it, well, one way of doing it is going to be using a multimeter directly. Now, at the bottom of the multimeter, you have to look and look for the highest amperage um, amp reading that you can find on it. This one is rated for 10 amps. If you don't know what you're measuring, um, it's possible to blow the fuse out of the meter. So generally speaking, what I did before I really had a good understanding of what I was doing is I would take a small inline fuse and I would put a 7.5 amp fuse in it and if I blew the fuse out, or even a 10 amp fuse, it'll usually blow faster than the meter. It would give me a good idea if I was way over what the meter could handle. So, if you're measuring something under 10 amps, to do that, you basically take and switch your meter over to the amp function. And this meter will actually show that there's a warning because the leads are not in the meter and connected correctly. And we put our leads into the ground connection that you'd normally use for measuring voltage and the amp connection and we hook the meter up in series. So all of the power is actually going through the meter. And we can see we get one amp reading on the meter just like we do on the power supply. Now if you're measuring something and you're not sure what the amperage is or you know that the amperage is going to be above the rating of your meter, the second option is you can use a amp clamp. Something like this Fluke I-410 and what that will do is it will allow you to actually have a connected circuit with power. So I'm going to connect my circuit back up so I have one amp going through there and it will allow me to put the clamp around one of the wires and only one of the wires and it'll actually read the amount of amperage going through it. So to use one of these you have to look 
and on this particular one, I don't know if it's going to focus or not, it'll say on there that it's one milli, millivolt per amp. So that means I actually have to use a meter that can read millivolts, and I go back to using the standard um, ground and power plug that you'd use for reading voltage. Because the meter is actually going to read out voltage, and it's going to be one milliamp for every amp. So when I turn this on, you can see that floating in the air, I'm showing negative 2 amps. So you actually have to zero a lot of these. And you get them pretty close to zero. And when I put the clamp on, it's showing me about 1 amp. You can see that this isn't as accurate. Um, at least my clamp isn't. Maybe there's better ones out there. And if you reverse the clamp, it changes the reading from positive to negative. So it basically tells you there's an arrow on the clamp that will tell you which way the current is flowing. The third way to measure the current is actually to use a current shunt. And what this is, is it's actually going to provide a precise amount of resistance through here and it's going to create a voltage drop and that voltage drop will be equal to the amount of amperage and they usually stamp it somewhere on there um, I want to say that this one is like 75 millivolts per 75 millivolts for a hundred amps uh, these also have ratings. This one's rated to 100 amps. Um, it was a very cheap one off the internet. I'm not trying to necessarily trust that it's good to that, but um, for the low voltage, for the low amperage stuff, it doesn't work half bad. So your current shunt actually has to break the circuit. So you would have to take your wires from your circuit, your positive and negative, and connect them to the shunt. So all the power is now going through there. Once you have the shunt connected, you actually need to take a voltage reading across the shunt. So when I read across there, I get 0.72 millivolts DC. And that will actually scale to an amperage reading. So every time I get 0.72 millivolts, it's one amp. So if I increase the current to three amps, you can see I get 2.7 millivolts. And what you do with that is you can either use a calculator and scale it, or if you have a piece of equipment, you can actually put in a scaling factor. So this is actually reading the voltage and then multiplying at times that 0.72 milliamps, 0.72 millivolts per amp, and it gives us a reading of 3 amps. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful and saves you some painful things that I had to learn the hard way. Um, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.